when I was little, instead of kids' books, I read 10K reports. This new year, I have gotten like precision, like surgical with my schedule. Tell me about you. So I can go down my rabbit hole and I have to check myself. Welcome to the Million Dollar Sellers Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Chouquette. Today we have Steven with us on the call. Steven, uh, I've known you for a while, man. Actually, back and forth just from MDS and we've worked with companies you've started on a couple projects. So it's exciting uh, to get you on and kind of just hear about how it all got started. Um, as I get to know you more and more, you seem like a guy who who does a lot of different things. And I think uh, that's that's interesting because that's what I'm going through right now. And it's um, I feel like I got some things I can learn from you. So, you know, welcome to the show. And uh, I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, tell us how you got into all of this and some of the companies you've started and are, are working in. Absolutely. Nick, thanks for having me, man. Uh, likewise, always always fun. I think tracking down to maybe our first uh, Top Golf uh, uh, event at uh, Prosper, maybe from, from a while back. So it's good to always yes. have our le- legacy friendships, right? So it's always good. Yeah. So I uh, got started on my entrepreneurial journey uh, when I was in college. Um, I started my first company, Pride Bites, which is, um, is a custom pet product company. Um, in the pet space. And I started that company. I was in college and really formed as maybe a licensed product company and changed many times over to, to what we have today. But, um, yes, I'm, I'm actually a seller at heart. We sell about 3000 retail stores, um, a little over 150,000 units a month to retail stores. So, um, definitely understand the pains that, that you go through from a, a seller perspective. And then, um, because of that, really starting Gemba um, to help people kind of fulfill that. So really the on one platform to help you develop, design and manufacture products um, to shelf and um, being on the other side of that now and um, getting to see so many different products being launched. Um, yeah, I think it just feels somebody like us. I think it just fuels your mind and you always want to do more yeah. things. So, um, you know, I'm super grateful of, um, you know, everything that I've been a part of today. Yeah. Product develop product ideas are like dangerous for me. It's, it's, <laughs> I had to kind of shut that part of my brain off for a little bit. It's like, Nick, you can't, you don't have all this money to launch all these products and stuff. Like, you know, you yes, have to focus, yes. focus on something in, in one way or another. So, but yeah, I love when, um, I really enjoy that part of, you know, that creative process of, of coming up with ideas like that. So it's, it's great to be in a position to have time for that and um work on stuff like that and i know you've come up with like you guys are rolling out some tools soon that can possibly help with us so i'm excited uh to learn a little bit about that before we wrap up the show i think that's going to be interesting uh to touch on um but yeah i mean I, i know there's a lot of experience behind that so uh why don't you tell us a little bit about um you know what your role is at at your company now um, and what your day to day looks like. And, and I'd like to know how you've been able to grow. Like, what did it look like for you before? Um, and, and what does it look like for you now? Yeah, I think, um, you know, at different companies, I take different roles. Um, you know, Gemba, I'm one of the founders of Gemba and, um, I run all our sales organizations. So I'm really focused on new business, um, focused on our offerings, focus on, um, you know, our messaging and delivery of that and, um, you know, who we partner with in that case as well to, to get out there. And I think what one thing is nice is, you know, we really do partner well with a lot of people because we're really kind of agnostic to all the different groups that are out there within either Amazon or supporting different sellers. So, um, you know, we try to be compliments as much as we can to, to somebody's supply chain journey or product development journey. Um, and I think, um, you know, in terms of day to day, it's always just trying to talk to um, you know, more experienced sellers, people that are in the business and saying like, really, we have a ton of resources. Um, you know, when I say that it's because I've developed it on my own from my own business and, you know, brought that over, over in those relationships and resources over with Gemba and have expanded upon that, um, with offices, you know, overseas in those locations. So China, Vietnam, India, Mexico, South America, like all these places, um, now with boots on the ground to be able to really deliver answers, I think, um, to people better. Um, and so that, that's what really my day to day is, which is a lot of fun talking to people like you, 
um, learning your stories, you know, what, t- what keeps you up at night, what problems that you're having within your supply chains. And then I'm um, kind of, you know, almost putting that ninja team on there um, to not only solve the problem, but then run it more efficiently and more timely, um, creating more value within a supply chain for a business. So that, that's kind of what I'm super passionate about, um, you know, other than the, the physical creation process, which is, as he says, always fun, always to get in a room and kick around different ideas and what's possible and, um, you know, helping people kind of realize that value. Nice, nice, man. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, for for like me where the position I'm in, the value that it really brings to the table is like, uh, I don't have to hire someone to do that role, right? Like if I partner with this agency or this company, you know, and I use the word agency there because I feel like that's ideally what you want, you know, like it does exist, right? right? right. Like they, they are out there, these guys who specialize in some things and they build a business around it, um, you know, and instead of hiring and building your own department, you could just, you know, talk to one person and let them figure out, you know, all of the behind the scenes stuff. Um, and it works, you know, I try to do that as often as I can. I've got two good relationships right now where it works, you know, that way, um, in our business and we're at, you know, we're working with pride bites. Um, we just started working with you guys on something. So, um, you know, if it makes sense, we're going to move forward, but, uh, and we've got one, one of our products is in Vietnam. So, you know, it's hard to beat, it's like hard to go away from that and go to China Right, because they're told the twenty five percent there. You're just like, mm, like, <laughs> yeah. And you know, and more than ever, you know, that's what's really, uh, you know, if you want to ask me what I'm seeing on the ground within our space right now, more than anything, people have talked about leaving China. Yeah, it's like been a discussion. It's like all of a sudden, Q four of last year, it picked up. Like my discussions have fast forward completely. Um, where maybe more stalemate throughout the year, watching, seeing how things are happening. Um, you know, a lot of pressures can can be applied to get somebody to transition, right? Um, you know, it, it, my business at Pride Bites, you know, we, we run a, a multi-country uh, supply chain. So I always suggest to people, like, get it set up and do it. The investment mm-hmm. in doing that, if, if you're willing to go run ads for a month or whatever and not willing to invest in your supply chain which could de-risk everything for you um yeah. you know i'm not sure what where your your mind's at but in our case i think you know i strongly suggest that you get started on something like that um i love that you're producing in vietnam um as an option you know it obviously has a little bit higher moqs for some things but i think there's ways to negotiate around that um yeah. with materials and maybe separating that from materials into final goods, et cetera. Um, but yes, I would suggest to everybody listening to this, like if you are a seller and you're in a single country producing, it doesn't matter what the situation is. It just makes sense to be able to produce in more than one country since today it's possible. So I think we've learned a lot about Mexico and South America. It's a little bit harder there right now. Mm-hmm. They're not as up to speed, but you know, India and Vietnam are really, you know, making big splash. I know all obviously like Costa Rica, Nicaragua, like these areas also um, doing a tremendous amount of work. So, um, you know, my suggestion would just be to, to go ahead and start looking at that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. Uh, it, it's nice to have other places to go visit too, you know, yes. <laughs> besides yes. just China. Yes. Um, so it's in, we, me and my partner might take a trip out to Vietnam uh, uh, this year uh, to try and work on that relationship more. Cool. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. So, and I'm not we'll leaving China, like just, just to get, get right. We've you know, got stuff in China you know, too. We're not yeah. leaving China for yeah. any means. Uh, it yeah. just makes sense to, to have that, I think ability. Yeah. Yeah. And man, that stuff gets complicated too. You know, I think that's where having a good partner comes into play as well. Like there's a lot of, you know, other cro- de- other departments that can be impacted if your supply chain's not running right. Like your marketing team, your, if you have a sales team, like depending on how your business is going to is set up, like, you know, the, that needs to be dialed in, uh, you know, marketing guys can't be planning some big promotion sales, bam, we're going to do all this cool, great stuff. Oh wait, we're out of stock. <laughs> what, yes. Like, like yes. oh yes. man, you know, we, you know, we just spent a bunch of money expecting this big return, you know, because, you know, we thought we were going to stay in stock and, 
you know, acquire all these new customers. Right. Like, right. Um, as the heartburn. So I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's important for a lot of guys in our, our network that are still kind of going through that phase of, transforming as an entrepreneur maybe into maybe they really want to grow their business and now they're like an executive and they're like a real executive you know it's not you're not just an entrepreneur with a title and it's still just you um it, it's like you have you have a team right and like people you're you have to lead and they're dependent on you and stuff like that like you have to change yes. right you can't yes. keep all that knowledge in your head um and man that's tough i have found that to be tough as, as we try to grow our business because before supply chain and marketing and sales, it was all right here. Right. I knew what was there. I knew what we could do, could not do. Um, but I've even run into problems as I go more into like marketing and sales and leave operations and have left kind of being the Amazon guy as well. I'm not as dialed in like that. So I can go down my, my rabbit hole and I have to check myself and be like, all right, I got to, loop everyone else in um i think you make a great page. point i think it's an, an awesome point and i think you know you you change so quickly in terms of how your leadership style is you know when i first started and i, and I think also i think you touched on is like the confidence in the sales team yeah you know, if you're so, if something's going on in your supply chain and your sales team catches wind of it your marketing team catches wind of it yeah it, it definitely all those issues you know are raised i think it also brings into just general confidence I mean, your sales team's not confident. Your marketing's not confident. They're not in the right mindset. Right. Like that just crushes you, right? So maybe that's like the unknown of the unknown that you don't even know is crushing you, right? Yeah. And it's kind of seeping up into you like as, as you get there. But I think also like to your point is like as you lead, when I first started, you know, I saw my grandfather, right? This like hub and spoke model, like, you know, you're going to do it my way or the highway and it worked. <laughs> Right. And yeah. so I was like, wow, amazing. And like you, you walk in the office and people would be like scared, but they'd execute. Right. Yeah. Um, and I like had to find my style. I don't know if that's something that you have found too, is like, who are you as a leader? Who are you as a manager? Yeah. And how do you become, you know, to, to me, it, in my opinion, it's like become a servant leader. That's like what I ring true through all my organizations. Um, you know, how does that, how does that transition feel? You know, I think that's something that really impacts yeah, that's tough, man. I feel like I'm still going through it on that front. Like I, there's who I wanted to be, right? Like who the leader I wanted, wanted to be. Yep. And now there's like who I think the one I think I need to be. And it's a little more, t a little more tough, a little more accountable, uh, a little less, uh, I guess, casual, you know, mm -hmm. no, I don't want to say a little less friendly, but, um, you know, just so people know what to get done, what to focus on. That's really what it comes down to is I think people need to focus and, and some people need a little bit of pressure to focus. And, yep. and that's what I want to, want to help with. So that's what I'm navigating through, which I think is a good, it's a good exercise because it really caught, I can't just like type a Slack message and hit send and like walk away and not care. Correct. Right. Like I've got to be like, ah, uh, you know, that might be received wrong or, you know, maybe I shouldn't use that word. I don't know what that really means to him, you know, um, and just trying to communicate in a very clear way that that anyone would understand. Because I believe that's almost always possible in like any interaction. Um, so it's tough, but it's kind of like good sales or good therapy or you know something like that like you 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 kind of get presented with some information in a way that it's like oh i need to take this action yeah and, and just get it you know get it done yeah um, absolutely so that's that's what we're, we're i'm struggling with right now um working through yeah i mean i don't think there's any clear answers either right like you're going to test yourself and ultimately like you're going to see how your team responds and i think the clear maybe the clear answer is just your success, right? Like is the right. team performing and executing to where they are? And if they're not, then it's, you know, maybe the style or, you know, where, where you're messaging. And uh, it's funny, like, you know, especially as you grow across countries too, the way that they uh, want to be reminded or the way that they want to, you know, interact yes. with different things is going to impact your business as well, especially in the supply chain business. So, um, you know, that's always interesting how you meet the factory, how you talk to the factory, how right. you, 
you know, your, your, your project managers, how do you get the most out of them? How do they see your culture? Because they're not living in your culture day to day. Right. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, all those, I think all those leadership tactics, um, you know, are, are huge things to, to, to focus on as a leader because it gets the most out of your team. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I feel like that's that topic and a, a bit broader one of like remote work in general, it's something that is happening like in, at such a boom right now, but no one's talking about it. And um, I, I forget who I was chatting with. Maybe it was Ro who gets on the podcast with me sometimes. But um, you know, we go, we read all these books like EOS, you know, and, yes. and scaling up, and all, and all these books that uh, really were yeah. they're ta- yeah attraction. <laughs> really, they're talking about like you know, you're in a building, right? Like you're in an office, yes. right? You're face to face, and and all the, the ways that they run those things, which I think is good. You know, let's say it gets you 50, maybe 80% of the way there. But I think what's important now is, is you've got to have like confidence to, to make your own way to kind of figure out this remote working thing and, and taking the time to figure out how to navigate relationships. Like you said, across different, different countries. Um, I mean, hell, even the first time you start, Remember the first time you started scheduling events across different time zones on yes. your calendar, right? <laughs> yeah. Like how it's, you're struggling your way through that, right? It's like learning yeah. a new language for a little while or something. Or like didn't set your your proper uh, where, wherever your location was, and you arrive in a place and your schedule. You don't even know where your schedule is at. Yeah, like, yeah it's like yeah. Nowadays you get there, it's all formatted correctly for you. Yeah, I mean, remote work has definitely uh, changed us quite a bit. So, you know, we're all remote. And, uh, you know, traveling quite a bit again, which is great. Um, just got back from China and I'm planning to go okay. to India shortly. And, and I think that's maybe the biggest trick is just get in front of people, um, get your yep. people in a room. And um, that's a really good, that is a really takes, good, right? yeah, I want to just pause and, and like <laughs> let that echo because that there it, it's magic. Like being someone who, you know, I had a business before in law in land, uh, escaping and lawn maintenance, worked a lot of jobs around a lot of people, sales teams. Yeah. And took I realized I took it for granted the magic that happens when you get people in front of each other. Uh um, yeah. it's amazing. And that's why MBS has done so well, right? I mean, there is a magic when you get a bunch of awesome sellers in a room who have a ton of experience, right? And I think going to the events is always something of value to us because I think that that brings like true value once you start sharing one another like okay i hear what you're going through right now right okay right well, here's somebody you can talk to or hey what do you have for me like let's let's talk about what you're doing on social or, or podcasting or all these things open your awareness right so it's um you know and that goes back to kind of feeding into your leadership style it's like if, if you're not open if you're not like trying to always educate yourself or learning or getting ahead of it like then then there's no way you can lead a team that way either right i mean right. it's impossible so you know, then it, it comes to the challenge of like staying ahead of your team while also having to run strategy and execute yeah. as, on the team, right? So, um, which you know, a lot of pressures as a seller in general come come at you quick. So, um, you know, th- those are this a lot year of I've gotten like new, <laughs> what this new year I have gotten like precision, like surgical with my schedule. And um, how have you? What what has changed from from last year to this year? So at at first I was doing uh, a lot of like recovery type stuff in the morning, like breath work, meditation, kind of like preparing for the day type stuff. Um, Of course, there's also been those uh, those times where I would just wake up, drink coffee. You know, I don't want to I don't want anybody to think I'm trying to be like, you know, Mr. Mr. Meditate all the time or something. I have my my days, too. Right. But this year, what I've done uh, so far is this wake up and work thing. So okay. I came across this training and there's a lot of science. You can look it up on flow state. The guy's name is like Mikhail or something like that, but there's good studies on this stuff with good data. Okay. Um, and their thing is wake up and work is, is you get into flow state faster um, as you start to wake up and then do the recovery stuff and, and then try to get back into the flow state. Um, and then they have like making a list, like a clear list the day before the things you're going to work on. They have these, like, I think there's like seven properties of flow that are all happening at the same time. And they talk about surfing, which is interesting. Uh, (laughs) Instant feedback is one of them. 
And they talk about the more that you get into a flow state, the more prone you are. And, cool. um, it, it really made me think about like how I am when I'm surfing a lot and how good I am at work and business and usually just like my mindset in general. Um, so you obviously get on the surfboard, your mind is at ease, right? Right. Cause you can't really think about anything else. And there's that yep. stress there, that little bit of pressure, but you're skilled. At least I am. I'm experienced riding a wave. I'm getting instant feedback from, from the board. Uh, I feel somewhat confident and like I'm in control, but you know, there's this pressure here and then, you know, boom, it's all over. It's done. And you look back and there's nothing there, right? Like it, there's no trace of what just happened. Um, so you're not thinking about anything else and that's what they, they're talking about. And, uh, supposedly you can get into that state faster if you just wake up and, and work because your, your sleep state is somewhat similar to that flow state. Uh, and, and the, you're not like getting distracted at all. And man, it's been working. Like awesome. I've done a presentation like I did a presentation in like three hours the first time I did it. Um, and I've just been able to put some like good stuff on my list, big things that only I can really do um, and knock out. So that's been working for me. And then I feel good about my morning, which leads into me feeling good about my day. And then going back to leadership, I'm more receptive to putting out the fires in coaching because yep. now I got my stuff done. Yep. Um, and you know, it's hard to, you, you don't understand that unless you understand it. Right. Like it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's cool. It's interesting. Learn. I'm learning a lot of new things, you know, having people working underneath me and having to deal with them, you know, on a regular basis and, and they're managing their own people. Right. We did a, a executive coaching for a year through this concilio company and, and it really helped out a lot, man. That's been good. That's awesome. And I, I think that focus, you know, is, is, is so awesome. I mean, you don't have your phone on the surfboard, you know, like you're, it's, you're in the moment completely. Like, I mean, there's a lot of key features where that's like intense meditation, right? Like I, I'm also a guy who meditates every morning. Like I'm not a guru, but like I, you know, my first thing of the day is like, you know, is, is, is meditation. And, um, you know, it's helped me cause I get crazy migraines. I get really okay. bad ocular migraines. Um, and so the meditation is actually like, you know, for that quick time period, as soon as I hit it in the morning and then, you know, start my day with work, uh, typically I'm in the right mindset, but I get, I get that. Like, it makes sense that like your best, right, right. Then like your best thinking is right then. And, you know, starting your day off on the right note, just like jumping in completely and, um, you know, then having moments to come down. And as you know, some of us, you know, with, with kids and whatnot, uh, you know, come back into life as we, we have to do the nighttime routines yeah. and all, all this stuff. Right. So, um, I think from a mindset perspective, that that makes a ton of sense. It's definitely worth trying. I always, I always love to try other people's techniques. I'll definitely, yeah, I'll definitely yeah. try it. <laughs> Check it out, man. Wake up and work with a ninety set. All I did was make coffee. I have a little automatic one, so I, I woke up, pressed the button, made the coffee, cool. went to the office and worked. I've been, I'm usually pretty good about getting up, but I had gotten into like a, uh, I was sleeping in a little bit like you know, the holidays and stuff. Right. So like I had yeah. to shake that off and I just did it. Um, so it was cool. It's been good. I've, I'm going to keep it up for the most part. Um, and try and do it every day and just make that habit. But yeah, these guys, it was uh Steven Kotler. That's the guys doing like some other cool. science. Uh, and they have like a program too. You can join like a community. Uh, it seems interesting. I haven't, I haven't joined though, but, uh, they got some good stuff. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Um, and yeah, and I thought about, I was like, man, I want to teach that to the team. You know, I was like that, you know, the team should know this stuff. So, you know, maybe, maybe one day I'll go down that, that journey. But, uh, yeah, we also do like monthly leadership calls with the cool. team as well, where my partner will bring a topic. I'll bring a topic and we'll talk about some stuff. Um, we have a fractional CFO. So, you know, that fractional thing kind of similar to like what, what Gimba brings to the table, right. Is just all that experience, um, you know, at, at some level to help, help you get where you need to go, man. Cause if you're trying to grow, I think there's a lot of us, you know, we got lucky with Amazon, right. 
um, and you're not going to keep getting lucky. I know I got lucky on Amazon, right? Timing, um, and and a lot. Bring of your own things. luck, though, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. By working hard for sure. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah. there was definitely an element better there that I couldn't, than others. yeah, better <laughs> yeah. times. There was an yeah. element I couldn't control there. Right. Like, uh, the yeah. timing and, um, you know, I, I want to keep that go. I want to keep my lifestyle. Right. And, and, and grow the business, man, and, and enjoy what I'm doing. And part of my lifestyle is, is doing work that I enjoy doing. Yeah. Um, and I think that sounds like the position that you've gotten yourself in, uh, Steve. And I think that's, that's what allows us to do a lot of, a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. right? It's like doing, doing something you're, you enjoy doing cause you can produce more of it cause you're going to do it more than the person who doesn't. And then if you, if you do things like think strategically about how you work and build a team, um, you can, you can produce at a high level. Those guys are talking about like, Elon Musk and, and Jeff Bezos and like the impact of a decision and how it like spreads through their organization and how many hours, how many hours of work he can do in one hour. I can't even come up with a number. It was like, it was insane. You know, that uh, I think that's crucial. You know, I, I would say like what has changed me over time as entrepreneur is just like my focus and the time that I have, right? It's like leveraging the amount of time. I'm, I'm so... Um, you know, segmented and organized in terms of what I work on and how much allocation I give to what the things that I'm doing. I think you have to be in that sense. Like um, I wasn't at the beginning and that hurt me. I wasn't as effective. I wasn't as strong as a leader. Now I'm very, very focused on uh, each business in terms of the needs of it. And then, you know, from what I'm giving it to start the week and end the week. Um, and also the, you know, we keep talking about people. It's that keeps yeah. resonating through our discussion. And um, I tried as much as possible, like thank my people, like constantly, yeah. um, you know, show them that I would be in the trenches with them, you know, work alongside them, um, be up those late hours or early mornings or whatever they, they need. I think that's like been something that's resonated through my entire career. And, um, and now it's like really paying off. I think I have really strong relationships uh, definitely amongst my companies. Um, and I think when everybody, like you said, like you're in the right mindset, you're going to work better when you know that your goals are aligned with the people you're working alongside you're gonna work better and i think um that, that's usually important for us as well as again but you know it's a lot of people when they meet their product development folks they think of your sourcing agent right like okay like tell me about you right so we often like yeah head into a conversation <laughs> where, like dukes are up man like ready to go and um you know in our case like i think that goes back to the resources you know i try to level with people and be like okay listen i've been to China 65 times. I know how this thing works. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, well, let's just like talk through like maybe what you're seeing, how you're seeing it, like what in other ways. And then, you know, where we can kind of fit in that discussion. It's always interesting from a, from a leadership mindset, but um, definitely something I think we continue to, to do. And the same feeling that we have internally, we hope to our customers as well. Like, you know, open yeah. doors, always wanting to talk through things or, um, any of that mindset. So I, yeah. I think those things are crucial from the change when I started to, you know, now in my career, at least. Yeah. You know, what's interesting. It's like being at this stage and, and listening to you talk about it as well is um, it, it makes me think like almost anyone can be a leader because no matter what you have to change, <laughs> like it doesn't mm -hmm. matter who you are, yes. you're going to have to change because it depends on your environment. Cause to lead, it depends on, you know, where you're at who's around and you know, that's going to change, that's going to come and go. So it's like, what's really the common denominator, uh, among leaders, you know, I think it's, it, it's, it's definitely, you know, mindset for sure, but just confidence in, in your ability to figure it out, I think is, is part of it for sure. But, um, yeah. And it's just, yeah, cool it's amazing to see. today, right? I mean, the two of the greatest coaches, of our generation are, are, are calling it quits, right? And, and Right, you know, yeah. Two guys that did true. things very differently, right? Like extremely differently and, you know, leaders don't all fit in the same hole, right? Or the same square box, so to speak. Um, you know, I was thinking a lot about it last night. I was like, like, how do they do this? Like, you've heard stories about Nick Saban. It's like there's like drill sergeant of a coach and, you know, and and, you know, and then on the other side, Bill Belichick, which is not like that, <laughs> right? Yeah. Do your, do your job, focus on the respect of the position. Um, you know, I think 
super interesting on like, you know, just the different methods to get people to, per- to perform. Yeah. Yeah. And it may, and it kind of makes me reflect back on that idea of just, you know, taking something to get you kind of looking at something, a business, a person, a good example that has the qualities that, you know, maybe you would want to be or have in a leader. Um, and, and that'll get you there. And then, and then just, you know, trust that you'll figure the rest out. Um, you know, it's kind of like raising kids, right? You're yes. going to figure it out, man. You're just, we're all just figuring it out. <laughs> That's right. That's right. One leg at a time, right? I mean, yeah. I think it, you know, to your surfing, we, we always just say too, is like, well, whoever you are as a person, my, my friends always joke with me that when I was little, instead of kids books, I read 10K reports. I've always been okay. Mindset. I've always wanted to start businesses. I've always wanted to, you know, do something. My grandfather, I got to see him do it. So I was always like, yeah, you know, driven there. And I also think that nice. like, uh, we, we have a guy on our team that surfs, uh, okay. surfer. And so I always tell him like, you know, be yourself, do, you know, do you. And I always tell everybody like when I'm on the call, they, no matter who they are, they don't even know him. But also like, oh yeah. If they mention surfing, they're like, yeah, legend surfs. And oh yeah, up for a second and like wonder, but you know, that kind of that confidence that he's exuded through our team has left that impact. So I think everybody's own personal culture also impacts uh, what you're doing. And I think that's, what's fun. It's like, you get this group yeah. of people in there that you surf, maybe somebody else doesn't surf, maybe they're a painter, maybe they, they're big in film, you know, outside of work, whatever it is, is. but um, those passions also, I think are really cool. Like to let through. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like, yeah. he knows what that can spark. Uh, in our case, in our company, we, you know, we, we always want to see that because it always drives a new idea, but um, you know, it's always good. I think from a, a company perspective to have that. Impact. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's ultimately, it's like those differences that kind of bring you all together in the, in the end. Right. Cause it shares that, that just passion. Um, and that stuff's important at, at work too. It's like, if right. you can get that in there, you know, if you can add that in the, into what you guys got going on, um, that that's when, you know, people go above and beyond for each other. Cause you're building real, real relationships. So uh, I want to be on a surfboard, man. You gotta, you gotta take me out. Yeah, man. I mean, you can come <laughs> here, come here in the summertime. It's always good for learning. You will definitely cool. get you on a wave. Um, but yeah, man, I'll keep you posted. There's a uh, good spots in Nicaragua to go and, uh, Costa Rica, uh, that aren't hard to get to. So sounds like an Salvador. MDS trip is forming. I do need to make that happen. <laughs> I, owe MDS, I, I owe an MDS surf trip to everyone. So cool. We'll keep you on the list. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> well, man, it's, uh, it's been good having you. I think we talked about a lot of good stuff, a lot of good, you know, leadership type stuff and, um, you know, like things you can leverage just in business. And I think, you know, that's what Gimba brings to the table too. It's like, it gives you leverage in that supply chain market because, uh, you have to stay up to date. You can't go off knowledge you had two years ago, right? Correct. Like you, you need an expert, someone who's staying up to date, has a team, has experience. Uh, so if you're looking for that, definitely, definitely reach out. Um, but yeah, man. Let us know if there's anything else you want to say. But other than that, thanks for coming on. Yeah, appreciate that. If you're um, you know looking for any product development, obviously just come check us out at uh, www.gemba.com. Um, yeah, I'm oh happy yeah, to, uh, help out. And and actually, what about the tools? So you mentioned some tools that were going to be coming out. If someone was interested in those, how would they you know stay in the loop on that? And, and, and why don't you mention those tools too? Cause I probably won't do it justice. What that. Thank, I appreciate that. Yeah. Someone. So, yeah. um, if you go to give you'll, you'll see one of the main um, sections is our marketplace. And so on the marketplace, um, what you'll see over the next uh, month is, um, really a bunch of tools that are going to be able to help sellers. So identifying new products, developing product concepts with the research that we're developing for you. Um, kind of a, a section that really enhances. Um, your decision making when it comes to new ideas. If you are an idea guy like Nick, <laughs> Nick and me, um, you know I think you'll you'll appreciate it. Um, it will help you kind of um, identify the next product you can launch. Yeah, man, that's super cool. I, I know, I, you know when you first told me, I was like, man, I need that like like right now. Um, I think it's a good tool to like fill that gap, allow you to kind of get confidence in what you're doing if you're new um, to that. Like we need to redesign a product. I just need a simple couple, simple things to figure out, man. If I could, if I could play with something to model that out, you know, that's a huge time save, huge money saver. 
Um, uh, so that's a big value add. I'm excited for that. Absolutely. Yeah. And it'll be all self-service. So, um, you'll check out, you know, check, check back with us at Dimba.com and our marketplace, um, for, for more updates. All right. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate you.